learning how to do something is incremental. Like the first thing is, we used to capacitor couple everything. Now, even Levinson capacitor coupled the JC2. We didn't use servos. They were, they were not, they were not um, let's say, they, were, they weren't easy to make in those days. We didn't have the right parts available to us. Everybody, this is Tyson Rabini with Quality Audio Video, an award-winning showroom in Centennial, Colorado. We are so honored and excited to have the Grateful Dead legendary sound engineer, John Curl, in the house tonight. And he's gonna be here for an evening of questions and answers. And in this video, he's gonna talk about how learning is incremental and problems with capacitors. Enjoy. Learning how to do something is incremental. Like the first thing is, we used the capacitor couple everything. Now, even Levinson capacitor coupled the JC2. We didn't use servos. They were, they were not, they were not um, let's say, they, were, they weren't easy to make in those days. We didn't have the right parts available to us. So what happened was, is we used coupling capacitors. Now, Mark tried to use the best coupling capacitor he knew existed at the time. I don't think they're made anymore, but they were called polycarbonate capacitors. And I think they've been replaced. What have they been replaced with, do you know? Oh, well, okay. It shows you how much older I am than you. No, it's, it, it was something else. It was something else in those days. It still is. Maybe it's mylar. No, it's got to be better than mylar. But anyway, polycarbonate, polypropylene might be the answer. But, yeah. Okay. And uh, the thing is, is that it sounded, they sounded pretty good, you know, comparatively speaking. But we had capacitors on the inputs. We had capacitors in between stages. We had capacitors on the outputs. We had capacitors just about everywhere. And uh, as time went on, we realized we could get rid of capacitors. There, there was a paper given in 1980, so we're going up to 1980, and uh, by a guy named uh, Walt Jung and his, his associate Dick Marsh, and I know both these guys pretty well, and they, they found that capacitors had problems. Boy, problems we had never measured directly for audio. And when you put a sine wave through these capacitors, you didn't see the problems. You only saw the problems when you put music through the capacitor. Duh, you know? So all of a sudden, our test equipment doesn't quite cut it, you know? And um, so all of a sudden, uh, we have this uh, way of, we have to think about how to make these comparisons between capacitors. So a guy who doesn't uh, believe in us anymore, but he, he worked for analog devices, this company, he had a special instrumentation amplifier, which is an IC, which didn't really work that well for audio, but for instrumentation, it was pretty good. And it had a really good rejection. So you could have, you could, if you had two identical, like if you put equal signals through the plus and minus input, it would, autom it would cancel them out, you see, and you could see what the rejection was. It might be 120 a million to one down. Well, that's pretty good. So what we would do is we'd put a, resist a capacitor with a load and then another capacitor with another load, and we'd, have, we'd start off calibrating it with two identical capacitors and see what our residual was. And then we would take one of the capacitors out and put uh, the capacitor under test in, let's say, and see how much deviation there was. And you'd be surprised. <laughs> I got up to 10% deviation. I mean, it was amazing. And uh, the, um, we didn't know this before. We still don't know this today, some people. I mean, there are people who will fight me tooth and nail even to this day about it. Now, oh, it doesn't matter. Or it's there, but it doesn't matter. Well, OK. It was, it's measurable. And then there's another kind of capacitor called a ceramic capacitor. And that one is really, really bad most of the time. Only the little ones uh, can be even remotely good. And they actually are very good for RF and things like that. But, but, and sometimes they're necessary because they're tiny and they're bipolar. You, you can put signals both ways. They're not, they're, and all that. But they distort. And they re some of them just really distort. I have a Sony tuner that was their late, latest and last one that they made of that type. And it had these 
crummy, <laughs> caps in them. I took them out. Uh, uh, and you think that they'd know better, but they don't because they're making something for a price. And, uh, you know, it's hard to measure it. You know, you got to put music through it again. You know, you got to listen to it. You know what I mean? You can't just test it. Yeah. But we learned a lot of things uh, through the years. And it's been tooth and nail sometimes, because sometimes people don't want to believe us. You know, you know, you're just, what are you trying to do, sell capacitors, what, you know? No. In fact, well, I like to eliminate capacitors. So right now, I use as few capacitors as possible, coupling my circuits. That's why he was talking about, uh, Bruce was talking about, uh, we use uh, servos. We found that we could use servos, we could make them with the existing integrated circuits that we can buy. And they have really good, they're laser trimmed, you know, from the factory. We don't have to mess with them. And then we could, uh, you know, they'll automatically zero us out. And then we don't have to worry about it. And then um, we can le le get rid of all these coupling capacitors. And even the, bi even the, the capacitors in the power supplies, we, we, we tend to use, uh, oh, really good ones, you know, as good as we can afford. As always, I hope you guys are getting great value out of this content that we're sharing with you. I'm Tyson Rabbity. Be sure to like, follow, subscribe, all the good stuff. You guys know what to do. And start a conversation with us below. I'd love to hear what you thought about this video and what you'd like to see in any future video series that we're going to be sharing with you. And if you're in the Denver area, be sure to stop by the best showroom in the world. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Thanks.